Living the Dream by Cynical. Everything was perfect for Silver Standard. The world spun on his axis. His job paid him gigantic sums of money for not much work. He had a world by himself, a mega complex dedicated to him. He also suspected that there was a cult created in the name of him somewhere. Everything was perfect, which was why everything wasn't. He lived a solitary life, as much as that could afford him. He wasn't much to look at if he was honest either. Sometimes he speculated on what ponies would actually see if they had looked at him. A dark grey coat, light grey eyes, slicked back black mane and trimmed tail. Then there was the ever-present suit with a black ballpoint pen in one pocket. He had no magic or wings to speak of, but his cutie mark, a tower of bits, proclaimed his sharp mind. In short, a banker, through and through. But for all the money, the fortunes that he sat on as the head of the Equestrian National Bank, what had they brought him? He had never quite believed that money could buy your happiness. But at least he could buy apathy and scotch, two of the main things that allowed him to keep waking up every morning. And just as they were there to get him up in the morning, the rest of the day followed in clockwork precision. He'd make his way downstairs at exactly 5 a.m., making himself a coffee with precisely 7 grams of freshly ground coffee beans imported from a single village in the southwest of Zebronica. Then, with his mug of coffee brewing nicely, he'd go to the door and open it exactly 3 seconds before the mailmare reached it, thanking her politely as he took the latest edition of the Daily Main and the Morning Main Hat Night. He'd shut the door and return to his coffee, moving it over to another counter where the toaster would be waiting. Breakfast was never an activity worthy of a fanfare for him. He kept it simple, a slice of toast, buttered, along with his morning paper and coffee. He'd have three bites from his toast, followed by one gulp of coffee. Three bites, one gulp, then again. The cycle continued. It always ended after five iterations, and he'd always managed to finish the morning main hat night by that time. At six o'clock, he'd go upstairs to get changed into his suit. Immaculately pressed as always, a return downstairs in his tails and tie. He'd offer his mansion one last sweeping look, and then he'd open the door and leave the house when the clock read fifteen minutes past six. The walk to work was always relaxing for Silver, no matter what the weather. He'd always take the long route to work, he never saw any pony, despite the big city. It was always a quiet walk as he walked down the Platinum Avenue and onto Hurricane Street. The park would be deserted when he strode through the gates and started towards the financial district, skyscrapers towering above him on each side as he ignored them and headed straight towards the stone structure composed of marble pillars and giant arches. The leftmost door would swing open, heralding his arrival to the bank. He'd nod politely to the pony on the reception duty and went straight into the center elevator, ready and waiting to take him up to the topmost floor of the building, where he'd emerge to find his secretary smiling politely at him and a cup of Earl Grey on his desk, milk, no sugar. Finally, he'd sit down at his desk at exactly 15 minutes to 7, waiting for the day to begin. Then he'd have the day to think about his life amidst the busy work of a desk job. For every seat he signed, every contract he reviewed, and every second that ticked by on the grandfather clock. He didn't necessarily like the cycles and the time and the constants. In fact, he hated them. He hated how they made his life feel alien and unnatural. He hated how they ruled his life. It was so monochrome. He got up, he ate, he went to work, he ate, he came home, he ate and he slept. What he wouldn't give for a bit of variety. Maybe he'd have four bites of toast in the morning before his gulp of coffee. Maybe he'd bring a fountain pen instead of a ballpoint. But it was the perfect life he lived. What was the point in changing what worked? It was another motto of his. You don't fix what isn't broken. And like the many constants in his life, he stuck to it. He stuck to the monotony. He stuck to the golden rule of the day. Get up, brew coffee, get the mail, eat breakfast and he lived well by them. He was a millionaire. No, a billionaire. He had the silver complex to live in, no responsibilities, and an easy job. Everyone told him that he should be happy. He should be positively ecstatic to be rich and famous, living in the lap of luxury. He tried. He really did. He tried to find happiness in the life of a banker. He tried to find the happiness of a daily life of a rich person who got up and brewed his coffee and who went to get the mail. But to no avail. He told them that. They didn't accept it. They kept insisting that he was living the life that others only could dream of. Where ponies woke up in the morning and brewed coffee and met the mail mare. 
But Silver Standard didn't want to cause a fuss. He didn't want to complain about how every morning he got up and brewed his coffee and said hello to the mail mayor. He didn't want to complain about how his life wasn't that of a luxurious nature, but didn't because he should have been happy. He didn't want to be a pony that made a fuss. He should have been happy to get up in the morning and brew coffee. There were ponies in other parts of Equestria that might never manage to taste even the barest of instant coffee concoctions. So he got up every morning and ran through his cycles. So he got up every morning and went to bed at night. So he got up every morning, brewed his coffee and said hello to the mail mare. The End